Four turtle doves, three turtle doves, two turtle doves. All right, y'all, it happened the other day. A student got me. My students, unsurprisingly, like to pose different logic puzzles to me or little math problems, and usually, I have to say, I get them right, but on this occasion, a student got me, she got me, she got me good. It's Christmas time, of course, and she was asking me, hey, that song, The 12 Days of Christmas, you know, five turtle doves, four turtle doves, etc." my true love gave to me how many total presents by the end of that song. So I think to myself, I'm super clever, I can do this. On the first day, we get one item, on the second day, we get two, third day we get three, all the way up until the twelfth day where we get twelve items. So this is really just the sum of the first twelve integers. I know there happens to be a neat little formula for this kind of problem. You just take whatever that last number is in the list, increase it by one, multiply those two things together, and divide by two, and that's your sum. So very quickly, I work out in my head, six times 13 equals 78, and I confidently tell my student, 78. There are 78 gifts by the end of the 12 days of Christmas. Student looks at me, she gets this smirk on her face. No, she says, there are 364. And I think, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, if the partridge and the pear tree count as two or something, so maybe there are two items on this first day, we might have an answer that's a little bigger than 78, but 364? What are you talking about? Student reminds me, no, 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 on each day of the 12 days of Christmas, my true love gives to me not just that one item or two items or whatever the day number is, but that day number's items and, once again, all the previous days. In other words, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me one partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and the partridge in the pear tree. In other words, on that second day, I actually get three items. This number, 78, is the number of gifts you would get on the 12th day, but that doesn't include the other 11 days. So at this point, you gotta give it to the student. Very clever, I say, but I still have a good way to come up with the number of items we get across all 12 days of the 12 days of Christmas, and it has to do with something called Pascal's Triangle. Or if you prefer, it has to do with combinatorics, but we're not gonna mention that. So Pascal's Triangle is this thing you might doodle together when you're in math class. Each time you wanna generate a new number, you just look above and you add the two numbers together that are kind of diagonally connected to that space. Wait, why is that a four? That shouldn't be a four. So so for here, 10 and 5 makes 15, and there you go. That next number in our Pascal's triangle is 15. For the next spot over, 5 and 1 make 6, and you always begin and end every single row with 1. If you start looking down these rows diagonally, you notice some interesting patterns. We can see the diagonal full of the actual consecutive integers themselves, but then right next to it, we see what are called the triangular numbers. The triangular numbers would be the number of gifts that we get, on each day of the 12 days of Christmas. They're called triangular numbers because you can arrange them into triangular sets of dots. First triangular number is one, the second triangular number is three, and that is what we see here along this diagonal in Pascal's triangle. The next one down after that would be the next triangular number of six. The next one down after that would be the next triangular number of 10, and so on. These are the numbers that are generated by that formula, n times n plus one over two, but if we go just one diagonal further, we get what are called the tetrahedral numbers. If we took these triangular numbers and actually made them a three-dimensional object rather than a two-dimensional object, that is, we tried to arrange them, and drawing is not my strong suit. I don't know if you noticed that earlier. But if we try to arrange them into this kind of three-dimensional shape where at the top level you've got one dot, and then one level down from there you've got three dots, that would be actually the next triangular number of dots. One level down from there, oh, this is getting terrible, one two, three, four, five, six. So we have level one, level two, level three, we get that six number of dots. The total number of dots here is what we call the tetrahedral numbers. At this point, we could just keep working our way down the Pascal's triangle and trying to figure out what's going to be the 12th tetrahedral number. But fortunately, just like there was a formula for the triangular numbers, there's also a formula for the tetrahedral numbers. You take whichever tetrahedral number you want, increase it by one, increase it by two, multiply all of that together and divide by six, 
and you have whatever your desired tetrahedral number is. For our 12 days of Christmas case, that is, we're going to take 12, increase it by one, increase it by two, and divide this whole thing by six. We can do some nifty cancellation once again, and we end up with twice the product of 13 times 14. 13 squared is 169, one extra 13 beyond that would be 13 times 14, so that's 182, and then two times 182 gives us 364. Just like my clever student already knew, there are in fact 364 total items across the 12 days of Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, like and subscribe. Y'all have a great one, I will see you next time. Four turtle doves, three turtle doves, two turtle doves, and a turtle inside of a dove.